Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's Lunch and Learn, provided by Officer Reports. This week's presentation will go over payroll settings. So, my name is John Greer. I'm a customer experience manager here with Officer Reports. And why is this important? You know, why do you want to make sure your payroll is set up properly? Well, you want to make sure your officers get paid uh, properly according to the clock and the clock out entries. But we want to also make sure that you're able to export to the current payroll providers we, we support for exporting. We want to make sure that you adjust your overtime rules based off your state and local laws and apply these to all the officers that are currently listed in the system. We also want to identify potential time clock issues directly from the payroll information window prior to exporting your pay period. We'll show you how to do that as well today. So if you've got a question, you can go ahead and click on the green chat bubble in the top center portion of your screen here. That'll open up a chat window and make sure you select my name within that window uh, to send a question directly to me. So as we discussed, payroll settings, you, know, you, you want to make sure that you're able to export to our, our current supportive list of, of payroll providers uh, and make sure that's set up correctly. You also want to adjust those overtime rules. Now, officer reports when an officer goes to clock in and clock out, our geofencing is, is restricting them to make sure that they're on site when they clock in or clock out or take a, a break or a lunch. So that's what's absolutely great about officer reports is that you can be guaranteed that they're on site uh, when they're clocking in and clocking out. Go ahead and move over to the live presentation here. So in order to set up your payroll settings, yeah, you'll go to set, account, and payroll settings. And as you see here, I've already got my payroll settings pretty much already completed here. We'll go over each setting and how they affect your officers. So your pay period, you've got uh, several options. So you've got a flexible schedule where you can select uh, when you run the export to what dates uh, it's, the payroll period is. Weekly, so 50 periods per year. Every two weeks, which is generally standard, uh, 26 periods per year, twice monthly, or even monthly uh, payroll options. So the first day of the first pay period for this month, go ahead and select this here as being December the, or, or the 12th there. So the first day of the, day of the week for the payroll period, we want to make sure that it, it lines up with the first day of the payroll period for this month. So it's Monday here, the first hour and minute of the day. So we've got 0 100 hours selected here. You can actually select um, a different time slot. So for example, if your uh, payroll begins at say 7 o'clock on Monday or 7 o'clock Saturday or you know, any different time that your payroll period begins, you can select from this drop down here. Now, this all depends on your local uh, state and, and, of course, federal laws, depending on you know, how you pay over time. Um, but before we get into that, I want to show you the, the payroll system export settings. So we'll go ahead and just have up here, this is payroll system export. And the current system that we it's, uh, export to is ADP PayForce, PACE, Paychex Core, and PayChoice. I know a lot of people are, are probably using ADP, so let's go over that here. So these settings you'll actually get from ADP themselves when you're you're doing your company profile within ADP. So you get your company code and enter it there. The batch number, this can actually just say AA as, in, as noted in the instructions here. And over time, to, uh, two hours code, which is listed in ADP as hours three code. Uh, so whatever that code is for there. And because we don't have anything specific to put in these, we'll just go ahead and make up some information real quick. But please do make sure that you grab this information from ADP, uh, or as you see here, uh, PACES has something completely different. You want to grab that from them. Paychex Core uh, doesn't have any settings there. It just exports, and then you can import it directly to Paychex Core. And Paychex has some settings you want to make sure you, you get from them as well. So go back to ADP. Um, quick information here. And save the changes. Now, before I went over to the payroll system export settings, 
we kind of briefly touch on this. So the default overtime configuration, um, and this can actually be overridden on the officer level, which I'll show you in a moment here. So overtime paid weekly, uh, generally speaking, that is 40 hours. So we'll go ahead and, and select that there. Uh, if you want to pay, or if you're required to pay your officers overtime on a daily basis, say if they work over eight hours, you can select that option. Um, and then we also have overtime to pay daily. And so that's something a little different depending on your state, local, or, or federal laws, depending on, on your specific industry or your specific situation. The seventh con, uh, consecutive day overtime rule uh, is something that you'll want to see if it is actually applicable to your, your local or state level. And the apply seven minute rounding rule to shift start and end times. So what this does essentially is if your officer were to clock in um, at say 12.05, uh, some state, local, or federal laws, or some state and local laws allow you to apply the what's called seven minute rounding rule. So if they were to clock in at 12 or 5, uh, they would actually be clocked in in the system at 12 o'clock. If they were to clock in at 11.55, they would be clocked in the system at 12 o'clock. And uh, so, you know, essentially, if you're requiring your officers to be there and clocked in five minutes prior to the start of their shift, um, it'll at least allow you to. Um, you know, they're, they're there, they're clocked in, but they don't start getting paid until 12 o'clock. Uh, so anything over, under seven minutes uh, defaults back to the uh, 15 minutes prior and anything over the seven minutes, so eight minutes and up actually forwards to the next 15 minute increment. Uh, you wanna check on your, again, local and state laws to see if this applies to you. So the time zone, the default time zone, uh, you know, is wherever your, your comp is located. Uh, so headquarter wise, uh, now this can, again, be overridden on uh, the officer level um, because officer reports is located in central town, American Chicago is, is what we select here. So let's say you've changed some of these settings. You wanna apply them to all of your officers. Go ahead and click apply default overtime settings to all current officers. And we'll go ahead and apply the default time zones to all current officers. And we'll go ahead and right here and click Save Changes again. Okay, so all the settings here are now in the system. Let's go ahead and take a look at the officer overrides. So let's go ahead and click on Edit Next to Jane Doe here. And you'll see here that she's in the system, doesn't have much information, but this, this information really isn't needed. Um, you can fill all this information if you do. do uh, want to fill that out. So go ahead and uh, click on payroll settings here at the top. So the time zone, of course, set RAS to American Chicago, and these are the, the changes that we just made in the payroll settings and applied them to all the current officers. Uh, the payroll employee number, so for example, if say ADP does require a, a employee uh, payroll number, you make, want to make sure that you enter this into every single officer profile. Um, so Jane Doe here is, this is employee number 001 at ADP, that way that when the export is imported into ADP, uh, it properly matches up with the correct employee uh, profile within the system. So let's say that we, uh, we actually pay uh, Jane Doe here over time weekly after 35 hours. Um, we'll go ahead and select that there, and you can actually fill out the the rates that you pay your employees as well if you want to take a look back onto those. Go ahead and update her. And then in order to run payroll, go to time and attendance, payroll. And you'll see here it's it's 12 11 through 12 24 is the current payroll period. Go ahead and run that here. Actually, let's run the payroll period for the last day period. So 11.27 through 12.10. You'll see that uh, John Doe and Jane Doe did work. Uh, there's indicators here, although there's some problems with the, the actual time clock setting. So you'll see here, yellow indicators is any day that they may work that actually has values over uh, 12 hours worked. Uh, if there's a red indicator, more than likely uh, they forgot to clock out, uh, you'll have to go through and adjust some of those settings. So or adjust that, that time clock entry where they forgot to clock out. So if you click on details here, you'll see that uh, John Doe uh, worked Wednesday the 6th and Thursday the 7th, 
Um, and he had 16 hours on the, or sorry, he had eight hours of regular time and 16 hours of overtime. So something is definitely wrong with this, this time clock entry. So we'll go into the payroll uh, clock in, or we'll go into the clock in, clock out records here. See that John Doe here has definitely uh, this is a problem right here. So twelve six, he worked twelve six uh, from 12, twelve o'clock in the morning to twelve seven to twelve o'clock in the morning. Let me make sure that that's correct. So maybe he didn't clock in uh, correctly or didn't clock out correctly. Just want to make sure here. Now, because this is a demo, the the yellow indicates that I've I've actually entered these manually. Uh, so without the edit, you'll actually see here than anything that hasn't been edited is actually white, whereas it's highlighted yellow if it has been edited in the past. So go ahead and update his time clock here. We clock at 0800 hours on the 6th. We'll update that. We'll go ahead and go back to payroll, run it for the last pay period. And we'll see, we'll see here that John Doe does have, in fact, only eight hours. So after we updated that time clock entry, it's not showing correct in a one running payroll. So as you see here, we've got a export payroll to ADP Payforce. This will show up if you have uh, configured your payroll settings. Uh, now, when you export to, to ADP Payforce, a CSV file will be automatically downloaded once you hit uh, export payroll, ADP Payforce, or it'll say export payroll, pay choice, pace, uh, so on and so forth, depending on the system that you have just selected. Uh, it'll download the CSV file and then you upload it into your system of choice, um, whatever you're using, whatever. So if you're using ADP, you'll import it, run it through their, their import payroll function. Now, if you want to get a general idea on, on what's actually being done, you can actually, or if you're not using a current supported payroll provider, uh, you can actually click on Excel download. And this creates a Excel download um, or an Excel sheet based off the payroll data. So we'll go ahead and open this up here. Now, if this wasn't a demo, we, we would definitely go back and, and take a look at Jane, uh, Jane Doe's uh, hours and see what's going on with her as well. Obviously, here is, is not, or could potentially not be right because it's listed as her having a shift over uh, 12 hours uh, in the Canon system. So you, the first thing that you'll see here is that you've got a uh, pretty much an officer hour, hour, hourly summary. So this shows you all officers, uh, their name, their username, their employee number, um, how many regular hours they worked, how many overtime hours they worked, if there's any overtime too, and the total amount of hours they worked. But down here at the bottom, you can actually see uh, each individual officer. So you take a look at Jane Doe, you'll see that she worked on Tuesday, but there's definitely a, some sort of disconnect here because she worked a total of 19 hours. So again, if this was on a demo, we'd go back and edit her time or take a look at her clock and clock out records to see if we need to modify those. And if you take a look at John Doe, you'll see that he did work Wednesday and he's got eight hours over time. That was when we corrected. Um, and of course, uh, as you use the system, and uh, if you're actually using this live, you have more entries than this here. Of course, being a, a demo, uh, we didn't want to have uh, too much information here to kind of overwhelm. We wanted to kind of stick to those points. So again, if, as we went over every uh, how to set up your payroll settings, how to take a look at the officer overrides, how to take a look at uh, indicators on whether your pay, there could potentially be an issue with your payroll when running the payroll, um, and then going through and editing and showing how that updates in the payroll when you uh, run payroll again, uh, we'll focus on our question and answer portion. So again, in the top uh, center of your screen, you'll see a 
uh, green bar, and on that bar will be a chat bubble. Simply click on that, select my name, and if we've got any questions, we'll go ahead and answer those. So we don't have any questions just yet. We'll wait a, a few moments here to see if any questions do come in. And nothing just yet, so wait in just a couple more moments here. So we do have a question asking you know, what, what companies we do support. So we'll go back and, and throw the, so currently we would, with the uh, payroll companies we currently do support, we'll go back over that one more time. So we have the companies we currently do support is ADP Payforce, Pace, Paychex Core, and pay choice. Now these options are set to expand in the future, of course, and if you do have any suggestions, we'd be uh, more than happy to hear what current payroll provider you are using uh, as we gather feedback and information. It's certainly uh, possible that we'll implement more uh, payroll providers that we can export to. And does anybody else have any other questions? All right, so I don't see any other questions coming in. And uh, just want to let you know that within the uh, email that you received, there's actually a link in it. And that link is in the schedule training section section of the email you received. You can click on that link and get a 30-minute training session of uh, anything from, again, payroll settings to adding officers to setting up sites and clients. Um, one of our customer service representatives will be more than happy to sit down with you and do a, a live training session showing you exactly how to go over a wide variety of topics, anything that you'd like within the officer report system. Not only uh, do our customer support representatives uh, do online training sessions uh, direct to you, our support center at support.officerreports.net is a wonderful source and is a go-to source for everything and all things officer reports. So if you ever have a question in the middle of the night um, or you want to look something up real quick, or how do I add a site or what is the different shapes in the geofencing mean, uh, you can definitely go to our support center and find out that information. And if you need immediate assistance and you're not able to find the information that you need, uh, our technical support team is wonderful. Uh, you can email them at techsupport at officerreports.com. So again, the support center at support.officerreports.net. Um, the training sessions with our customer support representatives, which you can find in that email that you received for the lunch and learn. And you can always reach out to technical support at technical support at officerreports.com. Well, again, my name is John Greer. I'd like to thank everybody for joining us for this week's Lunch and Learn. Everybody have a wonderful day and enjoy the rest of your lunch.